It comes down to this. One game to decide the fate of the Vietnamese Canadians and the Turkish. One will fall. One will technically still be likely to fall because we are in the lower bracket rounds of Fields of Blood here. Rocky River to figure it all out. And I'm excited, guys, because we have got Juji. Juji, I think, are going to be the sieve that has changed the most with all the changes in Season 9. It's just going to take time to arrive to that conclusion. With things changing for other sieves and also the cavalry dependency they can lean into in the late game, I'm really excited to see how this sieve is going to develop. Opening is a bit peculiar, though. To secure the center of the map, we've got Puppy Paw massing spears. He's doing this for a good reason. Juji got discovered a while ago to be... RNG broken on Rocky River. If you get a good spawn, you can get upwards of 200 resources underneath a meditation garden. In team games, it's even easier. <laughs> oh, yes. Tap that into my veins. That's going to be, what are we at? 108. 120 food, if I'm not mistaken. 120 food, 25 gold. And about 10 wood from that Medi Garden. Food is a huge deal this early on in the game. Especially if your follow up plan is a fast castle build. It could have been more insane, by the way, but the catch is you want it on your side of the map, so it's less likely you lose it. Remember, this is not the olden days when Juji were first released. Meditation Garden was broken because your opponents couldn't kill it. If they killed it and you rebuilt it, the resources doubled. That's been fixed now, so players have got a lot more tame ever since that. Love the fact that we've got Eric being nearby as well. So they're kind of funneling their resource gains into a similar area. Should make it much easier to defend their interests. Elsewhere on the flanks, Popcorn's Bro Wham is going to be playing as the Japanese. And I imagine we're looking at that standard fast castle build. Dr. Falcon has gone for the Dervish build. Okay, th this game just keeps on delivering. I'm such a big fan of this. It's so funny the way he's using it as well. He knows that Wham doesn't want to have to idle the villagers because he won't have enough damage quick enough to kill the dervishes before they get pulled away. So he has to kind of just let it be. And over time, this is going to force a repair. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So why go dervishes here? There's a really cool play here, folks. You're playing with cav sieves. The logic is now you can heal them. You've got roost knights. You've got mongols with Keshix. You've got byzantines with Keshix. And all you need to do is keep these Dervish just a little bit back. If they can't be sniped, this is kind of like the old school Ottoman feudal build where you build mass spears and then you get your hands on the Imams and you just win the melee mosh pits because you had this AoE heal. It's even more effective in team games because most of the time in team games people have to be Cav and the only person who can add in range Cav here is going to be Wham in age 3. But I think Wham's going to feel pressure to add in Mounted Samurai. I hope not. I feel like he needs Onomusha. We'll be able to find out soon though. Wham, about to have what he needs for the tech. And yeah, here you go. 156 food, even higher. Sorry, did I miscalculate somewhere? Oh yeah, I didn't do the final patch. I'm an idiot. Like I've done the two berries, but I missed out an extra 36 patch. So, yeah, 156 food, 9 wood, and 25 gold. A solid, what was that, 100 and... 89, I think it was. My brain isn't working right now because I just got a bunch of pain in my foot. That's my excuse. God, I've got that excuse for like two weeks. Yeah, 190 resources is pretty wild here. But that's the power it's usually on this map. I wonder if it is going to be used for greedy play afterwards because right now Puppy Paw isn't leaning into a fast tech. Instead... He's going for more greed. Second TC added in by the Juji. The interesting part is he didn't bother going for the Song Dynasty before doing this. <laughs> We've got system for the first deal. Okay, this game is getting cooler and cooler. Tavsen, because he went for the Keshiks, he's going to be full Cav anyway. This map is way too big to justify playing the Golden Corn Tower. Because yes, sometimes you will get Keshiks, but also sometimes you are going to end up with a big wow wow with the Ghoulams. And Ghoulams will take way too long to cross this map. Tech up complete. Wow. He is going to go for the Mount Samurai as predicted. Uh, it's a bit awkward here. 
against Mass Keshix, this is going to be really awkward, actually. I get it, though. We mentioned they need more of a front line, sort of. But surely that's what Poppy Paw is for here, right? Poppy Paw provides the spears. You can provide Onimusha. And then you just kind of push back. He's not going to be able to provide that many spears at this rate, though, because the burn is already coming in. The funny thing about this Meditation Garden is it's actually a top-off for all of the injured Keshix. <laughs> Where's the Dervish, by the way? It looks like one of them did get sniped, so big mistakes being made by Falcon for that to even happen at this stage. Shouldn't really be happening this early. Does at least have one for the AoE heal. How did you guys vote, by the way? I did put the votes up, right? Oh. Oops. Yeah, sorry, guys. It's a bit late for the Gamba. This is gone, though. That OP Meditation Garden should not be lasting very long here. Kind of surprised, actually, that Sassy hasn't peeled off the injured Keshix to top off. But remember, he has got the Dervish, and the Dervish does provide the AoE healing. They could just snipe it. The problem is, it's just so much cavalry. Look at the heals! The irony is, Puppy Paw and Wham are the ones that have been practicing this in 1v1s, and it's being used against them in a team tournament. <laughs> One Dervish to win a game. Ford Outpost being denied. Behind this, we have got more Mount Samurai coming, but it doesn't feel like anywhere near enough. And he finally realizes that Puppy Paw not able to, to be enough. He needs more assistance from Wham. Wham now going into the Onimusha. It feels like I've been relegating the other players because they haven't really been present. Eric doesn't want to come out yet. And you've got China TC booming. So they're not ready either. You're going to be forfeiting a lot of map control here. Magni now I'm adding in my sassy. This dive, the damage they can do to Wham here. He's got nothing to defend with. If they just keep going, they can wipe him down to about what 19 villages. Outpost gonna get targeted. A blocker on the gold. And remember, Wham, everything he wants to do here. Onimusha, Mount of Samurai, it all requires gold. Gold that he will not have. Eric now getting in position to try and assist, but this is unassistable. The camel on ease makes it impossible. They need to wait for the spears, which are now arriving. <laughs> Even that. This is Magani now. A little bit of count damage coming in. His Wham's like, yeah, let me take one villager for the 10 you killed. And they immediately switch. It's Benny Hills, guys. They're just going to be running away from the spearman the entire time. This is painful, right? You've got two players playing Spears. You've got two players playing Zhuganu. This would work on Hill and Dale. This would work on Gorge, actually, probably quite well. This would work on a map that's kind of wallable. Rocky River is eventually wallable, but not early. It's too big. It's too vast. Even more so on Season 9, where it now takes eight seconds to build Power Save Wars. It used to take four. Why do they put the mini garden in positions where it's likely to be destroyed by H3? Because you're early on getting a lot of resources. So it gives you a potential upside early, even if you lose it later. Makes sense. Like, percentage wise, your per minute increase this early on in the game, having it, huge. At 15 minutes, the loss of it disappearing, eh, your economy is much stronger, right? So it does make sense. It's the same logic as why would you go for a Desert Raider for free at the beginning of Fuel Age? right? It's trade-offs. Later on the game, these numbers that seem big at the beginning are quite small. Right, if I said you're getting 200 extra free resources at 40 minutes in, it doesn't sound very good. If I say that at 5 minutes, it sounds broken. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Every single player is just spamming cavalry on the side of Turkey. These new numbers are good, right? So I think they've weathered the storm. Their economy is bigger. This has been a cool play, but there is a big what now, I think, for the Turkish guys. They've done damage to Wham. They've rubbled and ruined him. But China collectively, both Zhushi and Chinese, are going to become a problem soon. So they need to find a way out of that. Tech up is now on the way. High trade house coming in from Ibi. Oh, get your numbers in, folks. That looks like a juicer. 
<laughs> I like how this is just a game of passive resource generation. Will it be the meditation gun? Probably not. So the farms have been accepted. Good raid coming through from Sassy. He's away from the Zhuganu, right? And remember, this is the beauty of being up against two Chinese players. <laughs> it means two players have a giant granary transition for you to target. Doesn't have enough Magadai to really come in for a second wave, though, so he's going to be forced to back away. Kind of frank. Ooh, throw the trample. Nice little wall up there in Thunamusha. This is slipping, I think, from the, the Turks. I mean, the idea was cool, and it looked like for a second... It was going to be an easy GG, but the Spearman Mosh Pit's getting too big, man. Someone has to do something other than Cavalry here. Mag and I are not going to be good enough in small quantities like this. Desert Raiders, in theory, sure, but was you getting new here as well? That's a losing recipe. High Trade House up 92, so it's probably going to be close to 180, 200. We'll see in a second. A deep goal from Tavs, and he should be feeling that way as well because this game is quickly slipping away from the Turks. Over double the military firepower now available to Canada and Vietnam. An eco lead which maintains even though one of their players is down to 37 villages. Wham, well, of course, having a very hard game, but this is the beauty of playing Onomusha. When you play Onomusha, it's the last thing to die in these engagements. It's the first thing to get away safely. So even if your economy is weak, it's something that scales. It's the same reason why Ibids do this Desert Raider spam. Yes, expensive. Yes, fragile. But very mobile. This is also going to get pinched. So can we nerf Zhuganu now? <laughs> it does look broken when you see double Zhuganu on a team, right? Even knights running into this are going to watch their health bars evaporate. Admittedly, it is only feudal, so now that they're castling up, these knights should be able to survive longer, but the Spearman issue is still one they've yet to solve for. Tavson is at least going to mop up a few stragglers. Eric now marching forward with his knights as well. Alright, ones if you think the Turkish are going to win this, twos if you think Vietnam, Canada's got it. Show me your biases. Tafsan is at least going to draw attention back towards this side of the map. In the meantime, Morgan Freeman Arms is the second player Canada Vietnam to reach age three. Big deal here. With this many as you can do, it's a huge DPS increase, but also now access to crossbow, a counter to this max cavalry strat. Wolves are going up. From Ibi on this side, a lot more defense from Puppy Paw. They're prepping for potential trade down the line. It's also protection for the back farms. They may have missed time when to do this. Ibi arriving perfectly to stop that wall going up. Spearmen are coming in for the backstab, but for the time being, this is enough knights to dive in. A lot wave behind this. Good interception by Tavsan. We'll keep Morgan Freeman arms further away. We have got relics returning, so this is what's going to inflate Wham's economy, right? He's suffered a lot. The relics can make up for it. He's already got three of them banked, and more now coming. So, sure, on the number count of Eco, he looks incredibly weak, but he's pretty heavily padded here. And the beautiful thing about having such a bolstered player economically on your team, you can be slung resources. So, Morgan can help him fix his economy. <laughs> of course, Sassy getting ready for the classic. Mongol trade, probably the strongest type of trade in the game. Next to, what, a Basset trade? So he's layering himself for that late, that late game. No Farimba yet. We've had like three Marlin games total in the tournament and no Farimba. Only two of them, I think, were on the newest patch. Both of them were Fulani. And front raid. Big hit here. However, the wrong player. Remember, Green is the one with 100 economy. This isn't going to end him. You really need to find either blue or purple. Well, good luck finding purple with that many villages close by to each other. TC now being dropped, so this is going to be the recovery art for Wham. Walls are going up. Only Palisades, mind you. Yeah, Frimba needs a buff, guys. Like, TLDR for Season 9. 
I've only seen like two games of Farimba, and they were both on the preseason. Even with any additional changes they've put in, even them fixing the bugs, Farimba is still too underwhelming. Maybe if you play like a hyper long, yeah, and I agree, at least go multi TC, I can see it working. But it's very difficult to give up Fulani. The timing it gives you is incredible. So Onimush now on an inception route here. Tafsin is at least going to try to find the villages, but starts to feel like he's being baited. And remember, this is the cool thing about Onimusha. They have the Kaburiya. Gives them the extra movement speed to chase this formation down. Kill it off. Grand Fulani Corral too good. It's a combo. Grand Fulani Corral is probably still too good. I don't think any Civ should have that much safe food so close to the starting TC. So freely accessible. Uh, but also, Farimba needs to be slightly tweaked. Farimba should probably still be old Farimba with the new effects. So you choose a unit and you can produce five of them. I'm actually quite impressed that Turkey's not dead. <laughs> when you look at the raw military count, this game should be over, but it's a matter of positioning, right? Like they've got cavalry and they keep forcing the Canadian Vietnamese to defend their own lands instead of marching across the field. But I think we are reaching what I call the convergence point. They're going to start shuffling soon, especially with what's coming here. Green just slung a lot of resources, so we might be seeing elite French Cav soon. Kind of surprised he didn't just take the A jump here. We are now getting the dive in. Remember, Yuan Dynasty, is it not there? No. So I think three minute arms should be going for that right now. Morgan three minute arms with the extra movement speed here. We'll be able to do irreparable damage. Militia pool's going to come in, but against Yuganu, that's irrelevant. Horseman spam as well. It's a lot of repeated crossbows to get through, and a second wave coming in this time of Spears. Ibi barely holding onto his own base, and now the overflow as it starts to hit towards that economy. You can't afford to lose this either. Remember, if Ibi starts to flop dead, it's going to rip onto the backline trade where two players are reliant on this. Right now, it is... Falcon, but soon Sassy is going to be adding in his own. In fact, the first wave just came through. And yes, two Vietnamese players are paired with Miami Public Four. The rules for this tournament is that you could have two nationalities maximum. So it's kind of a Nations Cup, but we didn't want to be too. Like, I, I really drilled this into Clear Man. Don't be too restrictive because some countries just don't have enough people. So that also left the possibility if someone like BC wanted to play, they could. For example, Bautun, even though there's enough Swedish people to make a pretty good team, he decided to join the Taiwanese squad. Sprint way down the way. So H4 is coming in from Morgan. No Nabusha. Ah, oh, getting ready to dive in. I think the Doomsday are a fast approach is here. Puppy Paul has a fight in the base as well. Oh my god, Ibby's going to try to go to sleep tonight, and he's not going to be able to. He's just going to hear in his head. The repeated crossbow noises just echoing through his brain here. He has two Jugen New spamming opponents camping his production. I don't remember the last time I saw a player look this dead without being down to 20 population. Reinforcements are on the way. Are they going to be able to do enough, though? They're running headfirst into Spearman. Shugenu Mass is now marching over. On the east side of this, it's just as bad. The cavalry comp now diving in towards the base of Falcon. And we do have that upgrade, by the way. Bolt Magazines. Remember, this is the unique one for Zhuzhi that gives them extra range and extra damage versus light melee infantry. Luckily for Team Turkey, the comp doesn't really involve much light units, uh, let alone melee that would be light. They're all about the heavily armored and cavalry. It's getting out of control, surely. I mean, they don't want to wave the white flag, right? Because it's the last game of the tournament if they lose this here, but it's hard to see a way out. The walls are up now. There's not going to be any counter raids. We've got Eric going age four. French Royal Knights fully upgraded. I'm going to feel unbeatable here. They're already doing the H3. Remember, this was Royal Institute, so 322 health. You can tell someone was a big Dota 2 fan with a 322 meme. Trade now being intercepted. Onimusha are at least going to get culled here by the Magadai and Desert Raiders. 
But you're looking like you're a player down soon to be two. Ibi has been reduced down to one military. Tavsan is now hurling what little he has into the jaws of China. And I think we are going to be seeing Canada, Vietnam proceeding through deeper in the lower bracket where things are getting crazy. Remember, not many teams are left at this stage. You've got the Chinese stack that Louis MT formed. You've got another Chinese stack. You've got GQS, which is another Chinese stack. Vietnam, full Vietnamese stack, me and Mike is once in the lower bracket. You've got a full Taiwanese stack with Baltoon in the lower bracket. And then it's going to be part Vietnamese, part Western, and 3D Clan. You will only have one full pure Westerner team in this tournament remaining in the top eight. You know, we usually talk about how dominant Europe is in 1v1s. Maybe part of that is because the East is heavily fixated on team games. They play a different style, a different mode, and they play incredibly well. But I mean, props to them, right? This, this wasn't just the Vietnamese players playing well. Puppy 4 and Wham, especially in that game two when they needed the most, stepped up. Everyone played their roles perfectly. And this team has the potential to go much deeper in this $1,000 team tournament. Commiserations to the Turks, though. I think this is the first time we were able to catch them. They had a really cool opening game. I mean, I, for a second, was convinced it was going to be a 2-0 with the way they execute there, but great adjustment coming in from Team Vietnam Canada. Or as they're named, VNC, which I believe is meant to be Vietnam in Canada. Let me know what you guys think about this, though. Like, watching this more and more, like, double chicken, dude, just looks so dirty. Wow. And we even have the frags out, right? Grenadiers are kind of cool here. You're up against Mass Cav. I've said before that I like the Grenadiers with the damage buff they can give when they're up against chunky units because those chunky units are going to last a long time. So it's beneficial to have that extra 15% damage. But I think we'll speed this up now. They're just processing the loss. They're down to 35 military. The economy half the size as well. This is it. This is the end of the row for them. An admirable attempt coming out from Sass, Falcon, Tavsan, and Ibi. But their journey will come to an end in Fields of Blood. If you like what you're seeing here, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the videos. Make sure you comment. And be sure to share them around. Share them on Reddit. Share them on Discord. Let people know this channel exists. We're live four days a week. We're uploading twice a day on YouTube. When I'm not working here, you can find me on all the big RTS channels. But yeah, don't say a stranger, guys. And I'll see you all in the next chapter.